Good morning. Happy Tuesday. I did a live stream two nights ago, maybe, uh, where I covered Jeff Gray's visit to the Anastasia branch of the St. John's County Public Library. And judging from his responses in my comment section, I don't think Jeff Gray understood it, which does not necessarily mean that Jeff Gray is wrong. It means that maybe I didn't go through and explain it well enough. So this is my attempt to maybe explain a little bit better the issues that I was seeing. Uh, and the issues that I was seeing, the issue that I was seeing was that Jeff Gray was saying that the place that he was at was a traditional public forum. That's issue number one. And issue number two is that he could solicit their period. And the reason why I have issues with those, I'm not saying that it wasn't a traditional public forum, although I am saying it most likely was not. Um, and I'm not saying that he couldn't solicit there. I have no idea whether he could or he couldn't, whether or not there are any rules that, re that governed his uh, soliciting there. I don't know. But what I am saying is that the the source, the authority that Jeff Gray provided was dubious at best to uh, support his position that it was a traditional public forum and that he could solicit there uh, without any restrictions on that. So this, this particular branch, the Anastasia branch, uh, I'm just going to call it the library. Uh, so the library is located in a shopping center. That library may be owned by the county, or it may be leased by the county, but I'm going to call it library property. I'm just going to I'm just going to say it's library property. But it's in a shopping center, and the front door opens into a parking lot. It doesn't open up onto a public road. It doesn't open up onto a road that is owned, operated, and maintained by the county. It opens up into a parking lot. Now, the first question that we have to ask is, who owns the sidewalk? Who owns the sidewalk? And by own, I mean either lease. I mean, if, if, the, if the library leases it, I'm going to call it owned uh, because they're exerting possessory interest over it. Do they, do they own that sidewalk to the point where they're able to make rules for it, or is it still owned by the shopping center owner? Is, it, is the shopping center owner exerting rulemaking authority over it? If it's the shopping center owner, who is most likely a, a private entity, a private corporation or LLC or something like that, I think it was an LLC, if I remember correctly, from uh, Google Maps. But if they, if they maintain, like, let's say... It's not inconceivable that a, a shopping center would have uh, rules about no soliciting on this property, right? It's, that's not inconceivable. Even if, even if there is a government-owned building that is adjacent to that property and is leasing space in it, the owner of that property can still make rules regarding the use of that property. And you're going to say, well, you know, my First Amendment, well, this is a private entity who's doing it. Now, could they make rules regarding your speech inside the library or on that? That gets a little bit trickier. I mean, I, I don't think that the government can just say, oh, hey, we're just going to pretend that you have rulemaking authority over us so that you can make rules on this. That's going to get a little bit nebulous. But for our discussion today, either the library owns that strip of sidewalk or the uh, and, and exerts uh, rulemaking authority over it or the uh, shopping center owner uh, maintains possessor interest of that sidewalk and, and rulemaking authority over it. If it's the library, well, then it's library property. And remember that, that buildings and property under the public policy that Jeff posted, buildings and property of the library are limited public forums. So if, it's, if it belongs to the library, it is library property. It, therefore, it is a limited public forum. If it is not library property, that means that it is under the possessory interest, rulemaking authority of the shopping center, then it's not a public forum at all. It's, it's, it's someone else's private property. It's, it's like, it's like what's, what kind of test are we using for John making rules on speech on his front yard? Well, no, there's no, I mean, I, I'm the fucking owner. I'm a private entity. First Amendment doesn't apply. I can tell you to get the hell off my property. Exactly the same way with the, uh, I mean, except for, except for like in California where other things have been to play, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, all things being equal, the 
First Amendment of the United States Constitution it doesn't apply to uh, rules made by by private parties about the use of their private property. So that's that's issue number one. Uh, now you're going to say, well, it's a sidewalk. It's a public sidewalk. It's open to the public. Therefore, it must be the public sidewalk that's talked about in the public policy uh, for the St. John's County libraries. Well, but is it? Uh, there, there's two cases, Supreme Court cases, so we can't, you know, we can't really uh, argue too much about them. That would lead me to believe that that is incorrect. Number one is uh, U.S. versus Kikinda. Uh, it's where the there was a uh, post office. People wanted to solicit on the sidewalk leading from the parking lot to the post office. The only, the only purpose of that particular sidewalk was for people to get from the parking lot to the front door of the post office. The United States Supreme Court said that that particular stretch of sidewalk is not a traditional public forum. It is an internal sidewalk, blah, blah, blah. And therefore, it is a uh, non-public forum. Or it would be a limited public forum in this case, since uh, St. John's County says that, you know, it would be a limited public forum, which is more freedom of speech than a non-public forum, but only barely, right? So, so U.S. versus Kakinda is, is pretty problematic. Uh, the other one is U.S. versus Grace. U.S. versus Grace uh, is where the Congress made rules about solicitation, again, solicitation, on Supreme Court property. And that, it, that was struck down because while it would have been A-OK -okay for the uh, Congress to make laws regarding the internal sidewalks, the external sidewalks that border the streets were indistinguishable from, uh, from normal public sidewalks that border streets, from normal uh, traditional public forums. And so because there was nothing visually uh, identifying them as non-public forums or as limited public forums or whatever, that particular regulation or statute by Congress was uh, not unconstitutional. It was unconstitutional. So the question, the question is, is this, is this stretch of sidewalk something that is for the purpose of you getting from the parking lot to the entranceway of the library or is it a internal sidewalk? Or is it indistinguishable from a traditional public forum? Well, you could argue a lot of different ways. Jeff, through his camera work, really tried to make it appear like he was standing on the sidewalk that bordered a street. So I think Jeff is smart enough to know that there's a difference between a sidewalk that borders a, a uh, parking lot and a sidewalk that borders a street. I think Jeff is smart enough to know that. He's, you know... He's not a stupid man, and he does things the way he does them for reasons, right? He doesn't he doesn't just fool police and uh, and city workers into thinking that he's something different than what he is. He also probably fools the viewer. And that, I'm not trying to say anything bad about him. You know, man's got to make his money. I'm just I'm just pointing out that that his legal analysis may be a little bit flawed, right? So. So it's going to become a question of, is this a traditional public forum? Is this something that the library has control over? And if it is, does the library's policy control? And if the library's policy controls, is this property of the library or is this a public sidewalk? So you can see there's a lot of analysis there just that has to go into it before you even get to the point where, where you can say that this is a traditional public forum or not. You know, it could be right now we have three, three po possibilities. It's either a traditional public forum or it's a limited public forum or it's not even a forum at all. It's someone's private property, right? So those are the three possibilities for this particular stretch of sidewalk. Now, so that's, so that's the, it's a traditional public forum part of his assertion, his blanket assertion that it just is, right? We don't know. There's, there's a lot of possibilities. It could go one of three ways and it's going to be, there's going to be some factual questions that a court is going to have to have answers to. And the court's going to have to make some decisions about the law on what applies, right? So 
a lot, a lot of stuff up in the air. But the other part of his assertion was that he had the right to solicit there, basically, that he could solicit there without without interruption. He could not be trespassed for soliciting there. And when we looked at that partic those particular rules, uh, the library's policy noted that on a traditional public forum, on a public sidewalk, assuming this is a public sidewalk and not library property, but on a public sidewalk, it is a traditional public forum subject to reasonable time, place, and manner restrictions, which is an accurate statement of the law. A traditional public forum may be subject to reasonable time, place, and manner restrictions. And then it enumerated various, what it believed to be a reasonable time, place, or manner restriction. There's like 15 of these different reasonable time, place, and manner restrictions that may or may not be reasonable. Again, a court would have to look at them and make a determination as a matter of law whether or not any one of these individual restrictions is a reasonable time, place, and manner restriction. But two of the two of those restrictions might be something that where where there would have to be a question of fact, where where a court would have to look at the evidence and make a factual determination. Like was Jeff approaching people? Was Jeff approaching customers? Uh patrons of the library was he was he uh interfering with that particular uh aspect of the library and the other one was whether or not he was soliciting within 15 feet of the library well first of all there there is a huge question on whether or not he was soliciting or not he says he's soliciting i'm not sure that would be a question of fact again for the for the uh for the uh court to determine whether or not solicitation was occurring I don't think it was. He's holding up a sign. He's just saying, you know, he's again, again, you know, Jeff's not, Jeff's not stupid. He has a sign that makes it look that makes people believe that he's soliciting when he's not actually soliciting. He, he does a camera view of the sidewalk where it looks like he's bordering a, a traditional uh, street. And this would be your traditional sidewalk, which would be a traditional public forum when actually he's on a sidewalk that borders a, uh, a parking lot. And again, I'm not saying bad things about Jeff. I'm just saying that this, these are things that I have noticed. So, so he's, he likes to mislead. He does like to mislead. But was he within 15 feet of the entrance of the building? Because uh, if he is soliciting, which is a question, uh, he would not, under those reasonable reasonable time, place, and manner restrictions that may or may not be reasonable, he would not be allowed to be within 15 feet of the entrance of the building or 150 feet during, uh, if, if that particular building is being used as a polling place at the time. So again, these are, these are questions of fact. It, was he soliciting, uh, was he, or is it a traditional public forum or a limited public forum or a, not a forum at all? Was he in violation? If it was a, uh, if it was a uh, traditional public forum, was he in violation of one of the reasonable time, place, and manner restrictions? So many questions. It's not as cut and dry. Nothing in the law is really as cut and dry as we would like it to be. There's always these questions. There's there's always room for interpretation. That's why you can never be 100% sure of which way a court's going to go because there's always there's always this, these, these questions of fact and law and how this particular finder of fact might find this and how this particular judge might interpret this law and, and et cetera. And so there's, there's always questions. So that I hope clears it up. Uh, sorry for taking so long to do it, but hopefully Jeff can understand that I'm not saying that he actually violated any of these things. I'm saying, I'm saying that, that his statements that this is a traditional public forum and that he was allowed to solicit there, uh, just period, are, are questionable at best and they're not supported necessarily by the, the policy that he, that he showed. So thanks for watching. Have a great day.